Hello, welcome to Boys Town. It's a beautiful sunny day today here in the village of Boys Town. And we're about celebrating a special event. It's the International Day of Women here at Boys Town and around the world. And we recognize the mothers, the sisters, the aunts, the uh, all about this, who we are today. And we want to recognize them here at Boys Town in the Hall of History, especially our girls. And as we always do with our history of Boys Town, we kind of have to start back with Father Flanagan. And why we start with Father Flanagan is over the decades, many people have asked us why Father Flanagan did not begin with girls back in December of 1917. And the reason why is he went at that time to the courthouse in downtown Omaha and saw what was going on with the girls in the courtroom. And he discovered that if a young lady came into a courtroom, there was always someone willing to take her home to be a servant or a maid. And while these girls' lives may not have been uh, spectacular, they might not have had a lot of support in their life, still at least they had somewhere to go. So Father Flanagan decided at that time that's why he would work with homeless boys. But throughout his entire life, he always wrote about issues facing boys and girls that was very important to him. And he always had a touchstone for many of his theories and concepts was his mother. His mother, Honora, in Ireland raised his, him and his brothers and sisters with a good social conscience to reach out, help people, especially those who were in need, both financially or spiritually. And that's where Father Flanagan got a lot of his grounding. And when Father Flanagan passed away, Monsignor Wagner did the same thing. He kept Boys Town as an all-boys home right up until the time he re retired in 1973. And then Father Huck came to campus back in 1973. And Father Huck said he was going to bring new projects, new concepts, new theories to Boys Town. So he did a complete overhaul of our youth care program. He did away with the dormitories, the boys living in cottages, and brought in the family homes style of living that we have today. And that was about 1975. And at the same time, the Board of Trustees and Father Huff discussed the concept of bringing girls to campus. And at first the idea was so revolutionary, they thought, oh, maybe the boys can't handle having girls physically be here. And they actually created plans to build a separate girls town right here on our property. If you know where Boys Town is located, over where our hospital is located now by 144th and Pacific Street, there were plans in place to build their own separate little village right there called Girls Town. And then they would live separate lives here in the village. And they kind of thought that's probably not a good idea uh, because since the children are here on campus, why are we separating them? And then they began a pilot program here in the city of Omaha. A home was rented in downtown Omaha and a group of girls moved in. And then for about a year, the girls would, would be brought out to campus and they'd go to high, into the high school and then participate in the classroom just like a normal school. And they discovered there was not complete freakouts. The boys could handle themselves and the girls could handle themselves. So at that point it was decided they could move to campus. And then about that time, 1975, the girls moved into residences here in the village of Boys Town. And their first homes were the old dormitories that were built here back in the 1930s. They were renovated into apartments, and that's where the girls lived for many years. And then when Father Huff retired in the 1980s, we had a, a few number of girls on campus, maybe 30, 40. But when Father Peter came, he really loved having girls here on campus. He said he wanted girls to be here, be part of the village of Boys Town. So under Father Peter, the number of girls living on the campus really expanded. And then the first group of girls uh, came to campus and they lived in the uh, dormitories and then eventually he built homes here on the campus. And we have a very special picture here. This is Father Huck welcoming one of the first girls. This is April of 1979 when the first girls came to live here in the village of Boys Town. And that's Father Huck and one of the girls down by the lake here on campus. And from 79 through the 1980s with Father Peter, the number of girls increased. They had their own homes here on campus, and they became just part of the village of Boys Town, just like the other kids here on campus. We have some great images of some of the families, what they looked like at the time. This is a family back in 1981. They lived in the cottage with their family teachers, just like the other uh, the boys here on campus. And then they began the sports programs for the girls. And they could be cheerleaders. They could be participating in the election of mayors. Our first mayor was elected girl back in the 1980s. And they just became an integral part of the village of Boys Town, just like the boys had been here on campus. And the girls here did everything, again, just like the normal kids. They lived in the houses. They learned how to cook, how to, to uh, take care of their homes, just like you know, all the other boys were, were operating here in the village of Boys Town. And at this time, too, the girls uh, that were here on campus had good strong role models because on campus we had a number of family teachers that were here and regular teachers in the school and other staff members and they were role models for the girls in the village. 
going back all the way to the 1917s uh, and 1920s, the first group of ladies employees, a lot of them were nuns that came to campus. And then a group, a group of lay teachers came here and they taught in the school for many, many decades. And these uh, women contributed to Boys Town's success. They cooked in the, in the uh, dining hall. This, this building used to be the dining hall. And then the boys saw them every day. And many of these ladies acted as surrogate mothers for the boys. Because at that time, there weren't a lot of ladies here at Boys Town. So for a lot of the boys, the lady staff here were their mothers. And then under Father Bays, the concept has continued on with our girls being part of our village of Boys Town. We, we celebrate them being here in the village of Boys Town. Uh, we have great images of Father with the cheer squad showing their hands at one of the sporting events. Uh, it's, they're just, again, just part of the village of Boys Town. And we have special programs set up to work with our girls here. Uh, the, many of them have graduated and gone on to have successful careers. We've had uh, several of our alumnus, our girls, former girls, their children now are, are successful. One of our former girls, her daughter, has been accepted to West Point and is a uh, cadet at West Point. So our boys and girls, uh, part of the program here, has been successful, and that goes all the way back to uh, the early kids. And on campus, too, again, we, today we still have good, strong role models for our, fam our, our young girls here on campus. We have family teachers working with them in the home. Uh, helping them with their emotional problems, with their uh, teaching them life skills, and just being a, a good role model on how they can operate themselves eventually as they become mothers and be part of the, the village of Boys Town. And for our centennial, we actually had young ladies be part of our program, and that was uh, a special coin that was created. And as we go by, I want to point out our map of the United States, because I almost forgot to uh, let everyone know at our sites across America, we have young ladies participating. Some are in residential treatment at our sites, and others are participating in our program. Because today at Boys Town, we have young ladies in all of our programs throughout the United States and here on campus. And uh, as I was mentioning, we have our, our coin here that was created for our centennial because when the uh, gentleman came and the lady artist from the uh, National Mint that came to the village of Boys Town looked at ideas and theories and concepts. So they, they cut these ideas and created these coins. And one of the coins they selected was a young lady. Uh, this coin went on to the Berlin World Money Fair was selected as one of the most inspirational coins in the world for its time. And this was the Boys Town coin that was created, young lady looking up at an oak leaf. And then they had other designs incorporating young ladies and families into our Boys Town programming. All part of the idea that uh, girls, again, are an important part of Boys Town today. And for our centennial at Boys Town, we had a special symbol created that did show the fact that young ladies were part of the village of Boys Town. We have it right over here within the Hall of History. There were actually three of these special statues created for our centennial. They were done by an artist here in Omaha named Matthew Platchett, and they represent the fact that we have young girls here. We have a young man holding a young girl, and this represents, again, we have girls here at Boys Town as part of our community, and we serve families across America. And this was statue was specifically created for our centennial back in 2017 to represent what Boys Town represents today. And going forward, girls are a part of our history and, and going to be part of our future, a part of Boys Town. And we're very proud of our former girls. They come back and visit us again at our alumni conventions, and it's great to see them come back. They bring their children. They're, some are eventually getting to the point they're ready for their grandchildren. So we love seeing them and welcome them back to the village of Boys Town. And uh, girls have just added a whole new aspect and concept to the village of Boys Town. And I'm sure Father Flanagan would look down and say, you're doing a great job serving all the children. Just like he always said, he wanted Boys Town to evolve and change. And we still continue to do that today, helping children and saving families and healing, healing families. And I want to thank you for joining me today at the Hall of History. And if you want to support Father Flanagan and his concepts and what we do today at Boys Town, please go boystown.org and become a supporter of Boys Town. Thank you very much for joining us today.